when I got out of high school, I didn't have the kind of grades that could get me into a college. I did not have money either, so I worked for a few years. Went to college at night at Fairleigh Dickinson University in Rutherford, New Jersey. Um, uh, eventually it graduated. I studied history and English literature uh, with a minor in journalism. I ran the student newspaper, had a great deal of fun doing that. Thought I might be a columnist someday, so that happened. Who knew? Um, got out of school in the mid-70s. America was in a recession. I tried hard to get jobs in various places, couldn't get them, but I heard about an opening in Boston, Massachusetts, at a little radio station, actually not so little, but a, a somewhat modest radio station that was inventing something new called all news radio. And the thing they needed immediately was writers to write the overnight all news radio shows. And I went and auditioned and got the job. Again, get us to the Reagan White House. Oh, so sorry. <laughs> so, you know, it, um, that took me to CBS News in New York, where I was a news writer and where I also did interviews of people and took the sound of those interviews and put them on the air. I produced shows. I wound up after a few years writing Dan Rather's daily radio commentary show. Dan was then just taking the place of Walter Cronkite as the anchor at CBS, and so I became his daily radio writer. I had become, along the way, more and more, since maybe high school and college and years afterwards, I was becoming uh, uh, politically conservative and identifying as a conservative, which was a surprising thing. I came from a, a nice working class liberal democratic family. To make this short, the White House heard about me for various reasons. Guy who ran the speech writing department called me up one day at CBS, said, if you're ever near Washington, come by, knock on my door. I totally said, I'm coming to Washington tomorrow. He laughed in my face. He said, then come by my door. Um, and they, they, I told the White House, all I want to do is be a speechwriter for Ronald Reagan. I want to help him. I want to work for him. And all I can do is write. So that's what I'd like to be. And they put me through my paces for a few months. They looked through everything I'd ever written to make sure I'd never, for Dan Rather or anybody else, done a denunciation of Reagan. Uh, they had me write make-believe speeches for the president, you know. I mean, the guy who hired me said, go write a 20-minute speech. I said, on what? He said, you figure it out. So I had to work very hard to, to get that job, got offered that job, and took it. And went down to Washington, D.C. in 1984, early 1984, knowing no one. As I look back at my life, one of the things that didn't astonish me at the time but astonishes me now is, wow, I left an entire career, started something new, and did it in a town that I did not know, did not understand, and where I didn't know a soul. That was daring. <laughs> so, so... I didn't think it at the time. It didn't strike me as daring. It struck me as, oh, this is wonderful. This is just great, and this will all work out. It'll be okay. 